Happy Thursday, uh, it's end of June. I hope everyone is doing well. Thank you very much for attending another session of RM Smart Investing. And what I thought would be timely with the summer and holiday season starting, probably most people are traveling. Sometimes it's difficult to have access to our own specific platforms. Like, you know, if you use uh, Tastyworks or TradeStation or Thinkorswim and TD Ameritrade. Uh, one of the best websites and platforms that I've found is finviz.com. And it, it encompasses so much that I thought it would be good. Hopefully I can in the next 30 minutes, just walk you through how do I approach it and the things that I um, uh, take advantage of the information. And uh, by end of our session, hopefully you will feel even more comfortable using Finviz because it is it is wonderful uh, website. It's very comprehensive and it's a free website. And speaking of that, let me start with this. What kind of services do they offer? So basically they have three different services. So number one is free. As you can see, it's, it is three to five minutes delayed information when you talk about maps and um, and as far as the statements, which they go through the statements is three year, uh, but it's free. I would highly recommend if you don't want to go to the premium, which most of you do not need, especially your trading, you do have your own platforms. So um, I don't think it's, you know, something that, uh, you know, paying $39 and 50 cents a month gives you uh, added benefit with your access to other platforms or paying 299 it's up to you but um, the best part is I would definitely recommend just register with registration you get uh, one of the best thing is you actually could have your own portfolio and follow let's say once you do a screening you want to set up a portfolio it allows you to do that and the, basically the layouts um, the signal you get a little bit of advantage of that free so that's rule number one and it's very simple to um to set it up so what do i do how do i use it the first thing i do i'm usually up about 5 um, a.m uh, pacific coast time and uh, uh before even getting on my let's say trade station and think or swim i go to the futures and this gives me a very good overview of all the assets, specifically, as, as you recall, we, we very much emphasize risk on and risk off. And visually, I can see if there is a coherent story. What I mean by that, if let's say the stock markets, especially if NASDAQ and S&P are up, is the VIX down? Is the bond down? Is the gold uh, more of a risk averse down? Is Japanese yen down? So, is there a, a, a story? If there's a contradiction, well, I'm going to watch this carefully before taking any, any position. So I want to have that story. The other best thing is they're kind of, uh, you know, categorized. So we have like energies here. We have all the indexes or stock related here. We have the bonds um, and notes, the fixed income on this side. Then we have... Uh, as far as meat products and livestock here. Then we have the soft, um, which is cocoa and the cotton and uh, basically coffee and sugar and lumber. Then we have precious metals and metals as a whole. Then you have the ags and then you have all the currency. So right off that, I can visually see what's going on. Then the, the default one is the one day relative, like for instance, today, which is the June 29th, 2023. You can see what were the best performers. And uh, one of the best things they have done, they have really improved, added a few things. Uh, a couple of things they did. They used to have a white background and now they have it in black and the colors stand out. The other thing is they did this and now you can actually have access to the five minute charts and the hourly right off bat when you, you choose it, it it's really uh, pops out as far as uh, the, uh, um, um, the visually the chart. But if you, uh, you know, click on it, then it will take you to daily. That's the default. But 
they have added, they have 30 minutes, they have one hour, five minutes, three minutes, and one minute. These are all added bonuses that they didn't have before. So if I'm doing, although it's delayed, but I just want to have a little heads up, you know, you can uh, basically just uh, use, and then uh, these are indices. So right off that, you can do that or you can separate. Um, another good thing is um, what happens is as far as maybe you want to separate uh, the categories so with that then um, you can just choose the ags and you can choose the uh, fixed income or soft so and you can have access to all the charts in one place so it will be like a gallery um now the once the markets are opening so um basically again like as i mentioned let's say you want to see the um energy here, all of them are uh, for a couple of months, they are already here. Visually, you can see it. Uh, one mention I mentioned about the only annoying thing would be these pop ups. So, when you are on a premium, you don't have that, obviously. So, they uh, uh, it's much cleaner in that way. So, um, I go to the futures first thing and I like to look at it. Then, let's say that it's about six o'clock, the markets are open, even at 5 30. So, this is as of closing at this time, which is about uh, uh 223 uh, pacific time uh or i mean 213 so uh basically this is also very comprehensive i have the three major indices here these are the cash close i can see if there was a gap down or gap up this is the close of yesterday for instance so we can also use this uh, again there's a little delay so be aware of that and the other thing is you have some internals here, you know, that as far as what is happening with the moving averages or as far as if they're above, for instance, uh, and we look at above the 200 simple moving averages um, or 50 day moving averages, how many are new highs, how many are advancing, declining. So there's a lot of information and volume there. It's, it's some similar, you know, we use like the ticks, for instance. The other thing is if you're looking for candidates and you're a momentum player, and also sometimes you, you had a class on penny stocks, you'd like to look at some of the smaller um, stocks, usually you see a lot of movements here. This gives you a little heads up sometimes when there's a momentum that will continue, but you can do an, an intraday, for instance, follow a stocks movement where they use a one minute, two minutes, or five minutes. But these could be some of the good candidates. And you can see it's just top gainers. Like for instance, here we have SGDX and you can see that was a 438%. Now, a word of caution, which is very important. When you see like big moves like this, sometimes, and especially with the smaller stocks. So you see there's a lot of stocks, a lot of biotech stocks show up here. Just be aware when there is a big movement, sometimes they have been a reverse stock split. So let's say it's 10 to 1 and 5 to 1, but it hasn't been adjusted. So all of a sudden, if you had a, like a 50 cents stock and all of a sudden they had a 10, you know, uh, 1 to 10 really is the reverse split. So they, they basically uh, a 10 to 1 reverse split. All of a sudden, that 50 cents is $5. And now you have a tenfold return on your money. Now that, that's not what exactly happened. So this does not reflect that. So it takes like a day or so. So just be aware of that. But you can, again, look at the unusual volume. So and then if there's anything uh, fundamentally analyst upgrade. And these are the, uh, the negative side of things. And you want to see if there was anything um, that went negative. The maps are visual, they're very nice if you um, watch that. And generally all the major views and news ones are here so you can see what is moving. So that's very helpful. But one of the best things that they do is, I remember I would say like 20 years ago and I would do the research on my own with the technical analysis. I'm looking for my favorite, let's say I'm looking for head and shoulder or if I'm looking for double top. But I had to go through the whole thing visually myself. And very, very few, I think there was one or two uh, uh, sites out there that they offered, it was a premium sites that they offered actually a pre-screened classic 
uh, basically patterns. And here we are. I mean, they, they, they these are really attractive. You know, whether you want to use wedges up or wedge, or and you can just by clicking, you know, um, on these, you can actually find some good candidates. Now, if I, uh, for instance, just click on the wedge, it will take me to the whole screen and it will give me uh, plenty of candidates. These are the top. So basically, uh, this is such a time-saving thing. Um, the headlines are very good. So this comes from the news. So the news goes, uh, uh, you know, deep and it, it's for the past two or three hours. These are the most recent ones and uh, they give you all the news that is the top news. And um, that's very important. The other good news is they, they give you what is upcoming, uh, for instance, just for the day. They don't say what is next day, but just for the day, what were the economic news. So uh, one thing you can do by just clicking on that, it shows you the whole economic calendar for the past week. So you can go back, see what happened on uh, Tuesday, what happened on, uh, you know, on Wednesday, as you know, Monday was off. So basically it was a holiday. So that's also is a, uh, you know, everything is like under one, one roof. So that's pretty um, helpful. Um, so here we go. And then um, also, as you know, some of my favorite things are the, the insider trading activity. So you do have right here, you have the insiders, as you can see, there was news and insiders, but these are the top ones that they, you can see just by again, clicking on it or moving the cursor, you can see what is, uh, how the chart looks and who's been selling or buying and what has been the top insider trading uh, based on the volume and the value. So these are just the most recent, these are the value. So again, you have something that it is, uh, it is right there. So it gives you again, saving time. Um, uh, the other thing, this is also new, it just came out. So this is our, like, it shows the last, and it can go on up to like a 20 or 30, uh, let's say, charts that I looked at, for instance, I looked at the taste, uh, you know, Tesla, and I looked at uh, Lucid and, and CMG and SPY and BBA. So that, that saves it for you. So you don't have to type it up here to look at the symbol. So you can already have it there. These are the upcoming earnings. And uh, again, that you can just by um, using the cursor, you can see the, the chart. So uh, that's very attractive. Uh, the last two also are very good. This is about the future. So middle of the night, if you're up, you want to see what's going on again, it shows you the five minutes. So these are the five minute chart. So you can see that crude oil has had a, its movement uh, consolidating at the top, but that's a five minute and uh, uh, basically gives you all the information. And these are your major currencies, uh, uh, Euro, Euro, US, Japan, and uh, British pound, and also the yields on your five year, 10 year and 30 years. So very comprehensive. I think this is, uh, you know, very helpful to understand, uh, you know, under just visually what's going on. Um, if you want to go a little further, for instance, you are interested in really what the currencies are doing like Forex, again, you can choose, you can um, go to the performance for instance, um, Basically, by going to the performance, you can see uh, what the major currencies have done uh, for week, for months, for quarter. You know, it, it's very helpful year to date. And then also you can look at the charts if you like. So again, it's like a gallery view. So on one roof, you can see where is the strength, where is the weakness. You see the dollar yen, for instance, and then Canadian dollar. Of all the times I'm leaving for Canada in a few days, of course, They've been strong, so um, against dollar. So uh, basically, that uh, that gives you visual again. Uh, they also have their own crypto side, so you can again do the exact same thing. All of them have performance; they have charts. So um, that's attractive. As I said, the insider again. There's a lot of other. You know, you can use bar chart. You can use there are some uh, actually uh, paid platform, but again, this. This gives you the opening. At least you can initiate something. So, for instance, this is the latest insider trading. 
So this is just right, you know, uh, what has happened the, the, the most recent. Now you can change that and then look at, um, as you know, my, um, as far as when I look at the inside of trading, I favor more uh, the buying side than rather than selling side because selling side could be for uh, you know a few reasons could be personal, but the buys are generally they are most of the time they are really thinking thoroughly to see if this is a good opportunity and um, that's um, something that I pay attention to now. Uh, you can also look at the top inside trading just the recent week. So we go the latest. We can look at what is the top uh, inside the trading. And again, I'm looking at the buy. So they go with the number, with the value. So you see all of a sudden Lucid. And this, this actually came out on my screens. You see the public investment fund is, when you look at the, uh, the float on Lucid, is like a huge amount of shares is owned by the, the public investment fund. So basically you can see that $1.8 billion was purchased on June 22nd. So, but this gives me, all right, there's a lot of activities and these are the value. And then of course you can look at the top 10% rate of what are the major holders are doing. You see the Berkshire Hathaway funds have been buying their own and Occidental and then, uh, approve so it just tells you um what is their position for instance so some of these companies so uh basically that's very attractive so that's where the insiders um the other thing i really like is the group so these are this you can use it by sectors and basically look at the valuation performance you can see again they they they, they show you everything as far as year to date up to one year you can change it if you like, and uh, rather than um, um, the way it is right now. So you can just look at the overview. And by overview, you can see major um, information that you need per sector, for instance, whether uh, about the valuation based on PE, based on price to earning growth, the float is which one is, you know, as far as the short. But also you can look at the performance. So year to date, what were the strongest? And by just clicking on the top, uh, you can sort all of these have that. Then you do screening by just by clicking on the top, you can see all well, the year to date, the technology, then communication services and consumer cyclicals have been the top over 20% returners. So um, you can, again, you can do charts. If you can you want to do valuation based on PE, price to sales, price to book. So you can um, also uh, uh, value things that way. Now, these are, this is a big picture. So that's the sectors. But how about if you want to go to total industries, want to see, well, how about performance so far? Or how about, again, the valuation? You want to look at the, maybe the lowest PEs and look at that and sort it that way. And, or like year to date right now, um, semiconductors are number one. Auto manufacturers are, you know, number two. And basically, the other thing you could do is, while well, you are interested, you find like some sector that you're very much interested, and then you want to look at, for instance, um, uh, let's say an industrial or oops, no, this is an in, uh, industrial, for instance. Um, what was the best performing uh, so far year to date? Now, if you click on this, then we, again you're looking top down. So we went start started with in the, you know sector industrial, then we went under um, in, um, uh, the sector we went in industry with like airports and air services and air services. There are eight stocks, and then I can again find out. Hmm, what is the best performance under that? And you can see J-O-B-Y uh, has been the best performer. So basically you can really go th through things very quickly. So um, that's very helpful when we look at the group. So you have a lot of uh, you know, attractive uh, uh, features with that. And then maps. Is again, if you're a visual, this is wonderful because it, it, the default is the S&P 500. So these are all the stocks. Again, the bigger the box, 
that's that's the based on market cap. So this is like Apple is a, you can see it's the biggest box because it is almost three trillion dollar company. Might have been actually happening today. So that's the biggest influence on S and P. Um, you see Microsoft is next, and you know there's Google and Amazon, and um, and then they are all sector based. So we have consumer cyclicals here. We have the real estate industrial healthcare. So now you can see, well, when I look at this, where the strength is coming and um, all of a sudden you notice like what happened today, uh, one word of caution again, this is end of quarter, end of June, there's a lot of uh, window dressing is happening. So, uh, but just paying attention, you see there's been some rotation all of a sudden from the mega cap, the, the top 10, uh, and uh, stocks, we've moved to some other stocks. And what you could do, you can sort them out by one day, one week, one month, three months. And you can also use valuation based on, uh, you can use price to earning growth, you can use price to sales. Now, for instance, when we think about price to sales, you see that, uh, you know, the really divergence in the sense of other stocks, when you look at Walmart is at 0 0.06, to price to sales, although we have to be careful, we don't want to mix financials and retail and technology. But still, you know, revenues it's uh, are kind of more difficult than earnings to manipulate. So I like more on the I like the the sales side of things and also the cash flows. But um, having said that, still we see there's some nice attractions. I mean, you you, you can compare Coca Cola to Pepsi, for instance. Then you come here and you see NVIDIA is almost 39 price to sales. I mean, I, I go, I remember the internet bubble. I remember some of those companies, they were like at 10 and 15 and they just blew up. So here is we all talking about future. There's a lot of, again, promises with the AI for in a sense, so that could be the justification. But still, this allows you to look at fundamentally where everything is standing. So I really like that. Um, part of the, again, um, this the feature. And you can look at the earning per share growth in the past five years. What is the float short? So are you looking for, again, one of my favorite things are obviously combining the insider activities with the float short. They don't really work with uh, with too much with the, uh, uh, basically larger cap stocks. It's sometimes it's good to find like in the smaller caps, they're magnificent. If you can find a uh, large short, uh, float short and have uh, heavy insider buying, that's usually a good combination. Now, another good thing is about this is like the, uh, the you can go to the world and uh, try that. So let me just uh, on this, I'll just go for like uh, year to date performance. And here you can see from around the globe, from Europe, you can go to Asia. And, and then when you click on these, like let's see the Baba, it shows you all the other stocks in China, for instance. So you can actually look at how they look, what is their year to date return. So, you know, again, it's beautiful that, you know, just by moving cursors, you get so much information. Um, I want to see, for instance, Toyota now in Japan, what are the other stocks are doing? So, it is very helpful. Again, you can sort it out. You can get some candidates. You can see uh, what is happening. And the charts are right there as well. So it, just play around with this. It's, it's very helpful. And uh, um, just a, a little thing about the news. News you know, constantly gets updated. You can get the best ones. And then you have the blogs. These are more opinion. So that also gives you the, um, um, as far as, some ideas, you know, again, some opinions, there's a lot of politics involved. So, um, and we talked about the maps, we talked about the groups, uh, insiders, the futures, Forex, crypto, uh, that the back testing is only available for elite or the premium. Um, so let's just use, uh, I just um, choose one stock. Let's say we look at Netflix, for instance. And so let's review that and, um, uh, once you do uh, choose a stock, it, it, it allows you to uh, uh, look at the chart. And as I mentioned, they've added these uh, um, the, the, the nice, you know, again, it used to be white, but now it's uh, 
it's black. So uh, some of these uh, are uh, like alerts, uh, they are, uh, and then publishing it. It's like you know, more premium for the drawing, for instance. Um, but this is all you need, again, if you have your platform. So they already, they do draw the, the trend lines. Like, oh, look at this channel. Um, if you recall a few weeks ago, or a couple of months ago, we looked at the wedge. It already had drawn the wedge. So once we broke out of the wedge right around here, we broke out and we look at the apex and our projection was at 342, was about 442. And guess what happened? We just hit that target and now there's a closure so and now it becomes at almost top of the channel so you have the moving averages your 50 and 200 already drawn for you again this is a little annoying side uh, but still i mean the amount of information you're getting at is unbelievable so um just looking at the charting you get the fundamental information here of the market cap are they a member of the nasdaq and then uh, 100 and then S&P 500, well, Netflix is. You look at the, obviously, more of a um, fundamental information, looking at the price to sell, the uh, valuation side of things, insider ownership, uh, as far as if there's been any movement, you know, been more selling than buying, institutions own 80%. And then you see the short float is 2.3% which is that takes about one, one and a half day based on the average flow to, to, to take care of that. So the average volume is 6.79 million. So approximately if there's, there's 10 million, it will take one and a half day to cover all the shorts. Of course, there's a performance. They look at the, from the risk adjustment, you see how risk this is, they look at the beta average true range, which goes back 14 days based on that if this stock moves $12.50, the volatility, basically they're looking at for the week is 2.85%, for the month is pretty steady, it's 2.8%. Um, of course, the change of the price. One of the, like a cheat sheet in a sense, you can also just look at how far are they from the moving averages. So, you know, they're pretty healthy away from the 200 day moving average, but we are pretty close at 20, bar or 20 day moving average so we are not overly extended from the moving averages so one of our keys as you know when the 20 bar moving average or 20 day moving average moves far away from 200 then you have to be aware so right off bat we can see that when is the next earning july 19th uh, uh, again we look at the balance sheet what is the debt to equity current ratio quick ratio how many employees are there and is this optionable which is very important especially if you play options is it shortable and the recommendation is based on the analysts so they look at how many of them are in a buy and or out performance or neutral or um uh, as far as it all depends how they define it, but usually strong buy is one and the strong sell is five and neutral is three. So if you, we had a, like a one or one and 0.8, that means more on the buy side. This is more on the buy neutral side. So um, that's important to see. The target price is basically they look at all the analysts and they get, you know, what are the target prices and based on this is 391 based on those projections which sometimes doesn't mean a lot um, the 52 week range if you recall we look at some of the candidates when there's um they are uh, way uh very close to the 52 week low so if they've been down or they're um, i mean uh, they're very close to 52 week low we look at that we see how far they've dropped from 52 weeks high so sometimes you can find candidates. On the other hand, right now we are in the momentum mood. So the strong gets stronger. So basically you look at some of the stocks that they're close to their 52 week highs rather than looking at the stocks that at 52 weeks low. Now, uh, we will discuss this on Saturday. Usually what happens for end of the quarter window dressing, you know, you want to, you know, the managers want to show that they are, um, uh, they've been holding the, the winner so they go to like 52 week highs and they sell the 52 weeks low so the week gets weaker because they want to get rid of them so they tell the clients oh listen we don't own this the losers so 
but then things change after the, the quarter ends. So just be aware of that, but we'll discuss it more on our market analysis. Um, of course, they have all the news and uh, basically they do have statements here. They have insider information here on the bottom, um, basically who's been selling. And then, um, you know, there's uh, uh, basically um, the blogs here that is opinion. So, I mean, it's up to you if you follow them. There's uh, everybody has an opinion. So, uh, basically, that's that's that. So, uh, but one of my favorite things, I mean, uh, absolute favorite things is the screening. Again, it allows you to do so many things based on what you want to do, whether you want to be fundamental looking for things, you want to be uh, technical looking for things. So, uh, Basically, that's uh, of course it starts to show up when it is, and uh, that's uh, this advertisement has uh, a lot of power on this. So this is one of my favorite. You can spend hours and hours on this screening tool, and you can do so much with this. So just the tip of the iceberg, I will share it with you. This is something that, again, you can use it just the way it is now, or you can focus on fundamentals, or you can just go with technical. I generally, we go, I go with all. So I have everything under one roof. So this is the first page. There's 8,506 uh, um, stocks. Uh, they did, again, a couple of things they added, so they didn't have this. And uh, number one indexes, they, they only had um, S&P and, uh, and Dow. And now, so let me just keep popping up. Um, it is being a little slow. So now you have Russell 2000. You have NASDAQ 100. Now this one is again elite if you want to customize. And the same thing with exchanges. Now they have Amex for instance. So uh, they only had NYSE. So uh, they have NASDAQ. Um, you can choose any sector for instance, for if you want to do specific sector or part of the industry. So it is, it's very valuable. And you look at uh, again, fundamentally, you can look at the balance sheet. It explains to you what each one is and uh, basically uh, the definition of them. You can choose the price. Usually that's a good starting point. Do you want them after hours? Um, one of the actually good things is IPO date. Do I want to have the, maybe I want some more history. So I want to eliminate some of them that they are younger than two years or uh, like for instance, I want them to be more than five years old or more than a year old. So I don't want more than, um, uh, you know, newer ones who have, don't have any history. On the other hand, maybe I'm looking for hot candidates and I want them in for the last year or last two years. So that's very important. Then, um, then this is the technical side of things. You can have the, the, uh, the volume. And uh, I mean, the, the pattern, the technical side of things. So you can choose uh, some of your uh, favorite patterns. For instance, um, like some of my favorites, especially from doing option strategies is like the channels. So uh, yeah, it's just a little slow. So you can basically use uh, the wedges, channel up, channel down. So you have a lot of uh, different options. It's not all of it, but still it's, it's good enough to start you at least to narrowing the candidates. You can also look at some of the candlestick patterns as you are more um, popular. So, you know, if you want to look at the dojis and or, or hanging man or uh, inverse or hammer. So, uh, and um, so, I mean, there's a lot of the choices that you have. So let's let's just use something like, for instance, you are uh, very much interested, let's say, um, in, uh, in technology, I just use that. And then you look at the technology and then what you want to do, you wanna um, narrow it down to semiconductor equipment. So basically now we have narrowed it to 793, but you also wanna see, hmm, do I want 
really I'm very bullish in, uh, for instance, and uh, Asia, for instance, what are the companies in Asia? So there's one uh, that it, it found, this is equipment, so I mean, probably one semiconductor, just a semiconductor. So let's go to Europe and see if there's any more in Europe. So, or you can narrow down and just basically avoid any of these and just say, well, you know what? Uh, I just wanna see any company that it is in Asia or um, in any specific country. So and it's a little slow. So these, um, these ads are keep coming. All right, try this again. Be patient with me. All right, so let's just let's just go with any, and and now you decide to say, well, you know what? I'm bullish on Brazil, or I'm China, or Colombia, or Ireland, and or Israel, or Italy. So it, this gives you all the. Um, Companies which they are listed in the United States, they're ADR. So it's not the companies, it's not a representative of the whole uh, market of that country. So let's just think about South Korea. And what we will have is there's 355. It's interesting that it's still reading. So let me just. Um, Um, this is Asia. We have 350 candidates. It's just a little slow <laughs> in calculating. But anyway, I, I hope you get the gist of it. So basically, um, if you want any country, you can pick and choose. And then um, I'm going to just wrap it up uh, just based on the interest of time. So let's just, I'm just going to go back and uh, let's say Malaysia. And I'm looking at what companies are in Malaysia. So we have seven. So you really like all of these. And then you say, well, let me look at their performance and uh, in Malaysia. Okay, well, you know, I like the Malaysian, I could buy the Malaysia fund, or I like to own these. So this is the beauty of this. You can actually, um, what you could do, you can actually save this as a portfolio. And what it will do for you, again, we have seven um, companies, it will give you a, a dummy fund for like $100,000. And basically, if you want, you can actually save this. So these are all the stocks. It will buy it as of the close of today. And you can either do 100 shares each, or you could have a $100,000 portfolio. It will save it for you. And then you can follow. The other thing you could do, going back to the screen, for instance, so it says, you can see, it if I want $100,000, I can use it equally. So, um, which I just canceled it. I want to go back to the screener. And basically, other thing you could do, let's say you have chosen your top 10 and what you could do you can just type in your favorite stocks tesla uh, uh, you know you can just name it uh, cmg apple and then once you did that well, i'll just give you a couple so let's say you have a combination of things let's say you have vietnam you have tesla you have um uh Apple, for instance, and then something different. Uh, yeah, okay. So, uh, and we just, so let's say these are the, the four of the things that you enjoy uh, following. So now you can analyze all of them. Basically, you can look at the valuation, you can look at their financials, you get the ownership, you can also go to the charts and Right off that, you can see that. You can look at the basics. Um, it gives you, again, more of a fundamental information about it. You can do it a little technical um, 
analysis based on the moving averages and all that. So after you've all you've done that, then you say, well, I want to, you can save this as a portfolio if you like. So now you can create a portfolio. For instance, I have um, the last thing I will share with you is a portfolio. And let's say I have done some of these and I'll share you, uh, I share um, uh, one of the things that I've done, I actually did it in 2018. So sorry about these pop up. So let's go to portfolio. And again, in order to have the portfolio, just make sure you're, you're registered. So you want to be signed in. Otherwise, it will not allow you to, to do the uh, portfolio. So, um, and that will be the last thing we'll discuss. And Okay, any day, any time, here we go. So for instance, I mean, this was a portfolio and, you know, it was up, it's up like 198%. Um, but what I did, um, let's see. Um, I mean, you can do like, like, done, like we've done like tax selling, uh, uh, any of these so you can just uh i don't know i'm just using another one right there this is a portfolio done many that was more of a like a, for seven eight uh, for 11 months and now if i would have held that you know for over 10 years things would have changed so but basically it allows you to work with uh you know this was like a, a 12 that was a, a competition that was for end of november for instance these were the um, there were 10 portfolios. So, but it, uh, you know, it allows you to play with these things and um, help you out to see as far as um, the markets, how they, uh, they're behaving. And now also it shows you where the, you know, your performance is coming. So there's a lot of uh, good things with this, uh, uh, this website. So uh, with that in mind, uh, we'll, uh, you know, actually, let me go to the screen because I think this is what happened with the screen. We have, oh, here we go. This is, so this is one of the screens that I did just, just for your, uh, so this is what you can do. So it's World Cup 2022 in Qatar. So what I wanted to see, I, I did my paper for my master's was, uh, would the World Cup uh, affect any, uh, on the, will have any effect on the stock market and um, uh, on the teams that they are participating and if the winning makes any difference. And we did that on Olympics too. So I was watching all the countries that they had ETFs, so it would be easier to watch, that participated in, um, in the World Cup. So you can see we've had 21 countries. And now I could see, well, um, some of the African countries, they did not have their own. So I use AFK. But you see Argentina, Denmark, you know, Poland, and Australia. So now I have a set up a, a custom-made portfolio I could watch during the World Cup and a month after to see how did the performance go, for instance. And was there a bounce, for instance, you know, Argentina won. Was there any jubilation, you know, as far as... Um, you know, with the markets. Now, basically what happened was, you know, the, the obviously majority of people don't really invest in those countries. So it's it's mostly institutional. So it, that's one of the reasons that uh, it doesn't uh, basically uh, give us the, uh, the complete picture, but it gives us, you know, something to look to look at so anyway this is uh the way i did it and like you can see since uh, the time that we did this was november of 2022 what has happened let's say the performance but this is the things that you can do you can play around there's so much uh, uh, uh so many ways you can uh you can use the finviz so and you can see i did it manually with that in mind, I, in the interest of time, I was hoping to do in 30 minutes. So I think we went to 45 minutes. 
So what I am going to do, I'm going to stop uh, the recording and open up for any Q&A. I hope it was helpful. I really appreciate it. Here we go.